All right, guys, so thanks for hopping on. This is Empower League's team call for October 5th. Um, and before we dive into tonight's guest speaker, I just want to cover some um, important things that are going on, up and coming things um, and dates for you guys. And then I'll go ahead and do recognition if you have any. Um, but the first thing that I wanted to sh let you guys know, and you might have gotten an email, you might have not yet, but they're sending out the emails for the health bet today. Um, so if you qualified, you should get an email telling you so. Um, and hopefully you hit all the qualifications. I'm seeing in a lot of the um, upper leadership pages that there's a ton of complaints because people missed pictures or people missed days um, and didn't qualify. So just so you guys know, um, if something goes wrong and you do not qualify for it, I can't fix it. You're, you're going to have to talk to tech support. Um, so just, I don't know, who did you contact today, Laura? You don't know. No, I, I do. It's there in the email that I received. I'm sorry, I have like a mouthful of cauliflower. <laughs> um, in the email I received, there's a little um, like okay. hyperlink that you can click on that you just write how many days. It asks you to say how many days you did Shakeology okay. and how many days you worked out. Okay. Which you can get off of your challenge tracker right. and submit it. Okay. So, all right, so if you have issues with it, you can submit a complaint for it to be rechecked, just so you know. Um, and make sure that your Beachbody account profiles um, are updated by the 10th. It tells you that in the email as well because that is part of qualifying for it. So um, the next thing is that the Success Club prize for this month, if you hit Success Club this month, you're gonna get a, um, a free webinar with Eric Qualman. Um, who apparently is like the Tony Robbins of social media. And so that should be a super awesome call. Every single webinar that I've ever earned for Hitting Success Club has been absolutely incredible. So I would highly recommend you guys push for that. Um, the next thing is that Core de Force, our brand new workout program, it launches on October 31st. It is a martial arts inspired workout. Um, if you missed the sneak peek that was on the 3rd, there is going to be another sneak peek on the 24th. So I highly recommend that everybody does it on the 24th and post a video of yourself doing it to your page and just share that this is a, a new program that we're coming out with that you're super excited about and give people a little glimpse into um, what it is and what it's about to kind of build the hype around that because new program launches are often... Um, a really great time and this is something very different than any workout that we have so for those people that like kickboxing that like MMA that like you know karate and things like that this might be a workout that's right up their alley so um, bigger reach for new people and if you want to check that out it's FAQ 5215 um, and then mark your calendars. Our next Super Saturday is October 29th. Um, I have posted the event page to the team page. I'll be posting it again before then. But um, highly recommend that you put some skin in the game and get to events because if you've been to one, you know that you can't really um, match the energy that you feel at events. And you learn awesome information, meet incredible coaches in your area, you hear really inspiring stories, and it's just so, so important to show up at events. So find one in your local area and mark your calendars for the 29th. Um, and then I haven't looked into all the details of this, this yet, but there is something going to be called a team spirit for next month. Um, which I guess it seems kind of like a team cup, but it's from what I quickly read, um, at least 20 people. Um, so it's going to be a team spirit, like who can rally to get the most um, team spirit, aka success club points together. Um, so that registration opens on the 17th, and I will be posting that to the team page as well. So stay on the lookout for um, more information about that. And I think that's it for updates. Um, does anybody have any recognition that they want to shout out this week before we get started? No? Okay. 
All right. Um, so I asked Jordan Benninger to talk tonight. Um, Jordan is our newest diamond on the team. Um, and I asked Jordan to speak because, first of all, I want her to share a little bit of her backstory with you. Um, she was not somebody that was initially interested in the coaching opportunity. Jordan was a challenger of mine um, for a while. And I remember last um, Thanksgiving, on Thanksgiving Day, I woke up to a message from her with a picture and a cute little black dress. And she was so excited about how fabulous she felt and how confident she felt. And um, we started to talk about the coaching opportunity for her. And she said, well, I actually have been kind of thinking about it. And um, it wasn't long after that that she dove into coaching. Um, she came all the way from the St. Virgin Islands to get to Summit this summer, and she has been on fire ever since. Um, she's been at the top of the Success Club boards for months in a row now. Um, she hit Diamond, I want to say, and from the time you started coaching, it had to have been, what, under four months. Um, but I really wanted you guys to hear from Jordan tonight because you've never heard from her before. Um, and just to see that, you know, everybody's timing emerges in its own way. Like not everybody wants to sign up and be a coach from the get go. Some people need to really have that experience and develop the belief and see what's possible, um, and have that fire to want to share the opportunity like Jordan did. Um, but it's, you know, one of those things where you can never give up on challengers because you never know who could turn into an absolutely incredible coach. Um, and then I'm just going to ask her some questions and um, help you guys see what her diamond strategy was and what her top tips are for hitting Success Club every month. So, um, Jordan, before I ask you your questions, do you want to just share a little bit about your backstory and why you became a coach, aside from what I just said? <laughs> <laughs> sure, absolutely. Um, on top of what Dana just, you know, touched on, it was something that, you know, I obviously didn't, I didn't really consider going into it. I mean, mainly I, you know, I bought my challenge pack in November. I, you know, wasn't feeling great about myself. I just had, you know, not that long ago, my, my second baby, which are, they're only 14 months apart and, you know, just really wanted to, um, to do something for myself. So obviously that's where it started. I bought the challenge pack and, for the first time, because, oh, well, rewind just a little bit. I had bought T25 prior, um, didn't have like a real coach, didn't have, um, you know, any of the support, bought it before my wedding through a, a mom's group. And, you know, she had talked to me about Shakeology and, you know, maybe I would do this. And I was like, uh, eh, yeah, don't need it. <laughs> um, I can do it on my own. Like, I don't need, you know, Thank you. You're great. Like I love watching her. Um, um, You're breaking up a little bit, Jordan. So again, then fast forward, uh, seeing what. Okay. Um, how about now? Is that better? Can you hear me? No. Yeah. Good. Yes. Okay. You're good. Um. Sorry, I was worried about that. Um. So basically, I was like, you know, something's got to give. I'm just going to go all in, and I'm going to get a challenge pack, and I'm going to do it. And had no idea what a challenge group was or really what it entailed and fell in love with it. Had great success. Um, I think I lost, like, 13 pounds in my first 21 days. And, uh, you know, within two weeks in, I believe Dana contacted me. It was like, you know, you've been really active in the challenge group, you know, I, I love seeing what you're doing. Like, have you, have you given coaching any thought? And I was like, well, kind of oddly enough. <laughs> um, so, uh, not really understanding what it was. I was like, okay, great. Um, Dana added me to some, you know, the coach trainings and, and honestly, like I really didn't dive in at first. Like it took me a while to still kind of grasp the fact that, you know, this is what I'd been doing for myself and, and, you know, I wanted to continue my journey. And eventually I, I realized like, wow, like what a great thing to like be able to give back to all these other people. I mean, 
when Dana and I initially had our first one-on-one -on -one coach call, I remember her asking me like, what, you know, why do you, like, what do you want out of coaching? Like what, what is going to, you know, are you trying to pay off debt? Are you trying to do this? Are you trying to do that? And honestly, at the time, like money in my head wasn't even an issue, not because I don't need it, but I don't think I really grasped the fact that you can really truly make a business and have a life with this. And so for me, all I wanted at the time was just to be able to like give back to other people what I was feeling because those feelings were just insane. Like I was just like, oh my gosh, <laughs> I felt so empowered, you know, um, as I'm sure all of you have felt, you know, given the fact that you're here. So, um, you know, fast forward, uh, I took my time a little bit. I signed up my sister in, I think it was December, and that was the first person I signed up under underneath myself. And I was kind of lackadaisical about it and, you know, went into some of the trainings here and there and wasn't really like full force. Um, and then February came around and that was, uh, I think Team Cup last year, right? It was February. So um, I was like, all right, this is a challenge. This is great. Like I'm ready. <laughs> I like to win. <laughs> um, and so I, I really dove in like head first and just was like, okay, learning as I go, like literally, you know, I would be talking to Dana about placement and this and that. I was like, okay, I have no idea what a leg is even, you know, <laughs> just like, I'm going for it. So just kept, um, you know, doing that and, and moving forward and kind of eventually breaking out of my shell and sharing on social media, which was like a huge, huge thing for me. Um, because given my past, which, um, is not a bad past by any means, but you know, I, I, um, you know, I like to have a good time and, you know, I wasn't sure how it would be received on social media or what people would think. Like, uh, I don't know. I was watching Kelly's video the other night and I could kind of relate to it because she said something along the lines of like, Oh, like a born again, like here I am health and fitness coach. And I was like, okay, I was worried about that. I think we all have like, you know, these things inside of us, hi, Declan, <laughs> um, where we're just like, you know, worried about what people are going to think. And, you know, that still sometimes is something I think about and it's something that I'm overcoming. But as soon as I started sharing and as soon as even people were outside of social media were just seeing my transformation, people were curious. So it became a very natural thing for me to be able to talk about it because I truly was a product of the product, not just on my physical transformation, but from what I was feeling on the inside. And I think, um, you know, that's something that we, we all in time learn to share and how to share it because that's within us. Um, so, so there it started and there it went. And, you know, that month in, um, February, I believe I hit success club 16 in my first month actually ever, you know, really wanting to coach and really wanting to help people. And, you know, of course, still, I was being very limited on what I was sharing. I wasn't even, you know, diving in fully in terms of, you know, social media. It was, you know, just kind of being, you know, talking about it, you know, whether it was on social media or off of social media. Um, and that was, that was huge. So from then on, I was like, wow, this is great. I feel so good that I'm able to, you know, help people. Like I'm seeing, you know, my, one of my very first challengers is one of my current coaches. And you know, although he hasn't fully dove in completely, I'll never forget the feeling of him telling me of the success that he had and what an impact I had with him. And that to me was priceless. So from that point on, I was like, all right, this is what I want to do. Again, still, I was unsure of like what, the business in itself was or what, you know, I could actually build. And quite honestly, it wasn't until like really like two or three months ago that I decided after summit, wow, this really is a huge opportunity. And I would be stupid <laughs> not to really take advantage of it because we have such a platform and we are capable of touching so many people. And it's not based on what, you see on your posts whether someone is like liking it or this or that because what I've grown to know through all of this is that it's they're they're watching like they're there and they want help whether they know it then or not they they 
it could be two or three months down the line. So anyway, long story short, that was um, how it kind of all started for me and how I fell in love with it. And also just the community in itself, like after summit and, you know, meeting these people like, you know, Dana and Kelly and Laura and Lauren and Nicole and, you know, everyone that um, I had such a blessing to be able to, to be surrounded by was, was like, wow, everyone, you know, it's just, it's such a great community. So that in itself too was like such a motivator for me to continue on wanting to be better for myself, better for my team, better for people that I'm, you know, sharing this opportunity with, whether it's a challenger or coaching or whatever, um, really kind of lit a fire in me. And that's, you know, that's where it's at. Like I, I feel, um, such motivation from, you know, even just the little messages that I get here and there, people that aren't even necessarily wanting to sign up being like, I love seeing what you're doing for yourself. I love, you know, you, you really motivate me. You're on my mind. Like whether they're buying a challenge pack or not, doesn't matter. Like if the fact that I feel like I'm at least touching someone is like means more to me than anything. So that to me is, is, you know, what has kept me going. And honestly, since, I reached Diamond, I think it was like mid August, early August. Um, now I've seen like the full business of it as well. And it, it's mind blowing. Like I'm so excited. I, I'm like blown away because I knew it was there because I've seen Dana, I've seen Laura, I've seen Kelly, I've seen like all these other coaches on our team, you know, have such success and, you know, financially, but just doing what they, what they love. And, um, it's inspiring and I want to keep going and that's, that's the truth and heart of it. Like, <laughs> I don't know like how, how, um, much more I can say in terms of that, but, um, I know I've had obstacles along the way and I know I've had different things that have, um, popped up and, and ways that I've gotten around them, but, but I'm, you know, I, I'm so glad I started. <laughs> I love specifically three things that you kind of touched upon. And I think um, the first thing is that you had to really develop that belief for yourself first. Mm -hmm. Like that's what I think a lot of us tend to get impatient sometimes because we think somebody would be an amazing coach, but maybe they're not ready or maybe they don't understand it from the outside looking in, or maybe they don't really have that full sense of belief yet but it's incredible what happens when you do, like when you have had the time to really have that um, heartfelt change for yourself and, and have that desire to pay that forward. Um, and just how your journey has emerged in its own timing. Like I love that you didn't really dive in at first as a coach. Like you say that you kind of just like, you know, were there, yeah. but you didn't <laughs> get it and you weren't really pushing and, hitting success club and then it just kind of clicked for you um which i think happens to a lot of people sometimes but you have to be looking for that um you have to be looking for that click you know and yeah. whether it's a team competition or a training or whatever it is you have to be curious and want to kind of seek that inspiration to really have that push to get going definitely sorry about the trains <laughs> um <laughs> The second thing I think, um, because I know I saw a huge change in you after you came to Summit. I think yeah. you came to Summit a little bit skeptic, but really curious and b enough belief to actually get to Summit, which is huge. That was huge for me. <laughs> um, but I think that Jordan got put in a room with Kelly, Laura, Lauren and I, and was kind of like, <laughs> what did I do? Like, what did I sign up for? <laughs> <laughs> and I think at some point you said to me, like, God, it's so crazy to like see that you guys are real. Like you're legit. Like this <laughs> is something actually like for real. <laughs> like, exactly. Yeah. And then as you went to trainings and as you went to workouts and as you experienced it all, you were like, Wow, this is really something powerful. And I think that speaks to the power of getting to events like that. Right. Um and just kind of having those moments to figure it out for yourself. Mm-hmm. What was the third part that you were just mentioning that I was going to say? Um, doo -doo -doo. Uh, 
Gosh, I'm not sure. Obstacles? It'll come back to me. No. Um, no, but <laughs> I want to dive into the questions so everybody can kind of start hearing what you've actually done to. Yeah. Um, oh, the, the last thing before I get into the questions, this is what it was. I was going to say that what you mentioned about that when you started coaching, it wasn't really about money to you. No, it wasn't. Yeah. Well, it was, I mean, it's there, like, you know, you right. have opportunity, but you're, you really, your heart was focused on pouring yourself into others having an incredible life changing experience like you did. Right. I think there's something really big to be said about that because, um, I see a lot of times there's a lot of coaches that are very driven by money, which that's not a bad thing. Not at all. Mm -hmm. This is a business. But at the end of the day, if you don't have the heart to better yourself to pour yourself into other people and to really show up every day knowing that you are bettering other people's lives in some way like that's part of the reason you get up in the morning mm -hmm. um, then it's harder to stay the course you know it's harder to do it long term and it's harder to show up every day because that income isn't immediate it doesn't happen mm -hmm. overnight but changing lives happens every single day impacting right. people getting those powerful messages, feeling like you matter and you're making a difference. Um, those things are every single day. And that's what you have to show up for first. You know what I well, mean? That, exactly. And that was the thing for me. It was like, you know, for so many years prior to having my children, I, I had, you know, things that I enjoyed on my own. I had, you know, even in my past, like I played sports in college. Like I, it was, it was something I had. I had, you know, my jobs, I had this, I had that. And then, um, not saying that I wasn't loving being a stay at home mom. I'm grateful that that was something that I, I was blessed to be able to do, but to, to find something that I could, I could do for myself and benefit other people and, you know, eventually like start bringing in some money to show for it as well. It was like, Oh my gosh, like this is this is amazing. <laughs> like like the this is great. Of it. Yes. The best part is that it's like it's a job that you have that is bettering you. Like what other job can you think of that is like have some have some personal development, like you know, learn something about yourself, get better. Like this is I, I don't know, it was just it became like over time, I'm not saying like it was something, you know, that was like, wow, this is it right here and there it was me watching other coaches too and watching other people develop because I'm not going to lie. I was a total skeptic. Like I was like, oh, okay, like what? I'll make, you know, a couple dollars here and there. Yeah, that's fine. Because it wasn't about that. Like you said, like it was just, you know, whatever. But, um, but yeah, I'm glad to see like it. I mean, it's, it's great. So you can, you can do all of that. You can help people. You can build a business You can you know, help support your family and, I, I'm just so glad that it wasn't something that my skepticism, I totally put to the side and I took the route of the higher path for me, which was like, it's not about finances. It's about you helping people, you know, and, and, and growing. I mean, you grow, we all grow. So it was just, it, it was, it was a huge eye opener for me. And don't you think, Jordan, that like getting your coaches to summit is huge because like you just said, you were a skeptic really until summit. And then you were like, Whoa, you know, and I feel like my first summit, I pretty much like have had very few doubts since then because I, like, it just, everyone that is on this call, is like, honey, I'm joking. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> needs to be at summit because it's where it's at and we get to all see each other and it's super fun. I don't know. Anyway, I think, you know, getting to diamond is about having um, a few yeah. working coaches under you. And part of that is getting people to believe in. I a and, yeah, definitely. I, I totally agree. Laura. Hi, Hadley. <laughs> dying to say hi to everybody. She's <laughs> so hear you hear her. <laughs> She's talking away to everybody. Love it. <laughs> The cutest. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'd, 
I don't know. I guess that's pretty much my backstory in terms of of how it all got started. And um, and now, like, my vision since reaching Diamond is so much more visible and clear than I ever imagined. Like, if you had asked me when I first started coaching what I thought, it, it is completely 100% different now. Um, even in my days before I reached Diamond, like, it was, it changed, but like now it's just like, wow, okay, here I go. <laughs> the, bigger picture, the bigger picture gets clearer. <laughs> it does. I mean, it's, it, I don't know what, what it is. I don't know if it's just like, I don't know. I guess it's, it's knowing that you are having other people believe in it with you and wanting to take the journey with you. That gives you that boost of confidence. And, um, because you know, there are many things along the way, like getting there that make you feel, okay. Um, maybe I'm not doing the right thing. Maybe this isn't for everyone. This isn't, you know, where it is. People go silent. No, you know, you, you reach out, you don't get anything back, but, the point is that, like you said, Dan, everyone's timing is different. Everyone's timing is different. And you don't know what they have going on, um, what what their goals are necessarily yet, and where they're at. But it doesn't mean that they're not still there. Like, it's just their timing is not there. And I think that that's, that's an important thing that I've learned along this journey, getting to where I am now. Um, and... Yeah, gaining confidence along the way has been huge. And you only get that, I feel like, from continually putting yourself out there. Um, you know, and you're going to get objections. I've had many, many. <laughs> but, but the thing is that I've noticed as well um, that I can speak from is that it was weird. I was kind of before this call, I was looking back at, at the challengers that I have and people that I actually know and yes there's you know a handful of people that I know in person and know in real life but there are so many people that I've never had interaction with on Facebook necessarily whether it's they've liked my post commented on my post but they've reached out to me you know behind closed doors because you know some people aren't social media people like they just aren't um, you know they like to watch from a distance and and that's that's great and I think that that's what we have to remember is you know when we are putting up our posts and we're not getting necessarily the responses we thought we'd get or the feedback we want um, it doesn't mean that it's not touching someone and I think that that was one of my not frustration I guess yeah that would be the right word because there's times where I'm like oh my gosh I just devoured like all this information and no one seems to care but um, but it's not true because People, people do, and they show up, and they, they, they jump in when they're ready, and that's all I can really say. You know, I mean, I was the same way, so I guess I get it. <laughs> I think that's a really important thing to think about, and I also think on the side of talking about confidence is why personal development is so important. Because there is days where you question what you're doing or what you're putting out there or if you're, what you're sharing is helpful or you get a ton of no's and a ton of objections that can really kind of like crush you. Um, and it's really important to continue to build your confidence in yourself and your confidence in what you're growing in this business um, and where you're going and that there is always people that are watching and always people that need help despite all of those that say no and give the objections and aren't ready and um, that are kind of silently watching in the wings. Mm -hmm. um, okay, I'm gonna dive into these questions for you. Okay. Um, so the first thing that I wanted you to quickly go over is what was your strategy for getting to Diamond? Okay, well, um, I'll be very honest when I looked at the diamond tracker. I was like, hell no. <laughs> this isn't happening anytime soon. <laughs> I was like, okay, this, you know, I wasn't having necessarily an issue with um, challenge, you know, finding challengers and people that wanted to take a chance on, you know, buying a challenge pack. That was really my, my personal issue. Um, but I think like probably many of us have run into what it was more, you know, finding people that actually wanted to coach. 
And that to me was like, okay, where do I start? How can I, how can I make this a process that's going to, you know, develop quicker than, than later. So my first thought was I'm going to take Peter, my husband, and I'm going to get him to Emerald. And that was, that was my first step um, alongside of what everything I was doing sideways. Um, and so that to me, because I was having, you know, I was having some success with success club, I was able to, you know, put a challenger here, put a challenger there. And before I, are you guys still okay? My internet just went weird. Can you hear me? Okay. Um, I got him to Emerald. So I was like, all right, great. Now we're in business. Let's work on finding, finding people that want to coach. And I had Peter for Emerald. I want to say it was like three months. Maybe he was at Emerald, maybe even close to four. But, um, you know, and I, I had talks with Dana and I was like, I'm, you know, I'm just having trouble finding people that really want to coach. Same issues I, I'm, you know, talk with some of my coaches. And so I, I relate to it. Um, and what I finally realized is that once you start really thinking about who you want on your team, like the people you want to, to grow with, the people that you want to, you know, see grow, um, and you put that out there, they, they flock to you like a little bit more, you know, it's just like every day someone's a little more interested. And I started focusing more on not so much people that want to do the challenge pack, but reaching out to people that I feel like I would work well with and people that I feel like would serve others well and want to give back in the same way. And, um, you know, high five my coach Serena because she is, um yes. and she <laughs> uh and I knew it and I knew it from day one and uh Peter my husband who's my other emerald um knows Serena and we were talking one day and, and I was like I would love for Serena to be on board and she was in my vision she was someone who I thought would really dive in and really want to take it you know the bulls by the horn and and give back because I know her to be that type of person and um so that was, that was a big realization for me. It wasn't that I kept having to find these challengers and wanting to, you know, push the coaching on them because it's not, it's not for everyone. You have, you have to kind of have a mental vision of, I feel like who you see is going to want to run with it. And, um, a lot of what I've been doing lately too is, is reaching out to people that I know enjoy being active. I know enjoy like wanting to, um, you know, be outdoors or do fun things. And they, they, you know, I'm like, this, this is great. Like you, you may want to like join one of my challenge groups, see what it's all about. Um, you know, see the community that we have. I know you're, you know, you work full time or you're part time or whatever and really build on that. Um, because it's not always going to be the person that is struggling in areas that they're working on for themselves. Because I know even when Dana asked me about coaching, I remember Dana, I said specifically to you, no, I'm not ready to do that quite yet because I'm, I want to focus on my journey first and, and get to where I want to be. And I've had that, you know, response handed to me as well since I started coaching. So I think like if you think a little more outside the box and you try to think of, people that you want to have alongside of you and you know who may, you know, want to be there right then now, may run with it a little faster, may not, may want to just dive in and see what it's about, um, I think is a really good start. And that's kind of where, like, for instance, like I, I mentioned Serena, I knew that this was something that was for her. Like, it was, I just, you know, and I don't see Serena that often. We live on a very small island, and I think I've seen you, what, like, once or twice in the past few months, but, um, but I just know her and I know her personality and I, I felt her vibe through Facebook and I, I knew like based on the type of things that she posts and her positivity and, um, you know, that she'd be willing and wanting to, to help other people. So I think when you're thinking of, of people that, you know, you want to have a vision of, of who you want on your team and that is like the key to starting to build. It's not, you know, always having to just like find it in your challengers, although you will, and that's awesome. Um, 
but when you think sort of more even in like your warm market of people that like may want you know something different or want something on the side or want to you know help their family in some sort of way so that was one thing for me um which helped and what else to getting to diamond um I don't know. It was a lot of, I, I'm not going to lie. Like I was frustrated at times because I felt like I was doing the work, but it wasn't necessarily producing what I wanted it to. And all I can say on that regard is that you just keep planting and you keep talking and you keep sharing and you, um, you know, you just keep, keep at it because they are out there and, um, even Serena, like I, I hate, sorry, Serena, I keep using you as a reference, but, um, you're my go-to right now. And, um, she contacted me in after I had reached out to her and she even watched a coach sneak peek back in April, maybe March, something along those lines. Um, and then I never heard back from her. And then all of a sudden in July, she messaged me and she was like, okay, I'm interested. So it's just like, you, you never know, like you just, you just have to, you know, plant the seed and people watch you and you, you see, and they see, and, um, you know, you're kind of there for them when, when they're ready and you just, you don't really give up. Um, Laura was just talking on her team call earlier about, um, how often you check up with people and you, know, you definitely don't want to hound people and, and be all over their, you know, message feed and whatever, but you know, a good, like every couple months and, you know, check in and see what they're thinking. I did that today with someone I've been talking to for a couple months and, you know, I still haven't heard back from her, but, um, <laughs> which is fine, but, um, but she's still on my dream team and I'm going for her. <laughs> so I don't know. Um, but that's, that's basically was my strategy is to get Peter to Emerald. Um, because I knew that that would, that would get me there a lot faster. And, you know, and it's great for me too. Like I love building his account. Like that's one of my goals this, um, this month is to keep him, you know, sort of in par with mine in terms of, you know, half and half. Um, and, and yeah, you just, you know, build, build, build and share, share, share. <laughs> well, and aside from that, I think, um, I mean, it's kind of obvious, but you have to note that you were consistent with your power hours and inviting and hitting success club. Mm -hmm. Um, because if you're hitting success club between six and 10, every single month, you're automatically, you know, kind of marking off those spots that you need on your diamond tracker anyways. Yep. Absolutely. Okay. My second question for you, um, is what was your biggest fear or your biggest obstacle that you've had to overcome in working to and past Diamond? Oh my gosh, social media for sure. <laughs> Definitely social media at first. Um, wait, you mean after Diamond or before Diamond? Either. Before Diamond? Or... Um, it, well, before Diamond, it was definitely social media and it was, um, you know, just, just really trying to be consistent. And that's something I still am working on because for instance, the past couple of days I've been struggling. Um, that's, I, I haven't felt like what I've wanted to say. I haven't really been able to like put into words or put out there and I'm not beating myself up about that because it's just what it is. Um, but what I do continue to do, um, is all my behind the scenes work, which is, stay in contact with people, follow up with people, um, you know, make sure that I'm not off the board with my challengers, make sure that I'm, you know, you know, trying to touch base with my coaches and that sort of thing. Um, because I think we all have our moments and it's hard sometimes to always feel like you need to be present in terms of like your face on your Facebook page and, you know, we go through it and, and I get it. <laughs> So that's, that was one of my biggest things and it's, you know, still something I'm working on. Um, and then in terms of fears, like I haven't, I don't know, like for me, like I say, I want to work on the coaching opportunity with people, but at the same time, I'm not fearful of rejection in that sense because I know I'm passionate about it and I know that 
people that know me know that. And I'm, I'm definitely not just like reaching out to anyone that's like, Oh, Hey, I think you should start coaching with beach, but you'd be amazing. Like, it's no, because I don't, I don't want that. I don't want that on our team. I don't want that. Like I, I want, I'm very selective and I reach out and I try to be as genuine as I feel I am. Um, and I don't know, it's, it's, it's weird. I don't have like um, as many fears as I used to, but I definitely had uh, my biggest one was social media before. And Dana definitely helped me push out of that one with some of my like transformation <laughs> pictures and things like that. Um, and that's the other thing is that, you know, once I had my transformation and I, you know, I was definitely still doing my workouts and doing, you know, drinking my Shakeology, but I wasn't as, um, involved in my own self as I was in the very beginning and I feel like that is such a key thing to continue with because you can't like you have to walk the walk and not just talk the talk like it's so important for us to be involved and in our own selves and without that like we don't really have a leg to stand on because what are we talking about you know um, and people people are going to they'll pick up on it like you can't fake it like you, <laughs> it's not something you can fake. So I feel like you have to really dive in, um, you know, to your own self and most importantly, be on cue with you and, and be giving to yourself and the rest of it kind of just follows suit if you let it. I think what you said um, just then was, totally on point and that's why it's part of the vital behaviors is if you're not if you're not really committed to it and you're not committed to yourself and your journey that you have no leg to stand on like you have nothing to share and you can't really fake that um because that's so very true yes <laughs> you guys <laughs> it's up from the you are a badass book it's a, a badass button <laughs> <laughs> Declan, go take it in there, please. Um, sorry, guys. Uh, um, I love that, Jordan, because really, and I think what you were saying about when you kind of have those days where you feel like you're struggling on social media a little bit, because we definitely all have those days, and it's hard to live your life on social media all the time. Um, I even feel like that way sometimes. And Okay, that's enough, please. Um, <laughs> all right. If you want to play with it, take it in the room, please. Um, what I was saying is that I think two things that typically that can mean it's time for you to kind of step back and fill yourself up. Um, in days like that, I do a lot more personal development or I really kind of try to disconnect and turn off my electronics and go do something in nature or go do something that kind of fills you up more. Um, but also in terms of, you know, being present, it isn't, it isn't always easy. Um, it's not always easy to be on social media every day, but I know what helps me is that I know that when I'm showing up that it can help someone else. So even if it's me sharing something helpful for my personal development or sharing a recipe or something simple that doesn't really necessarily expend a lot of energy, but it still is sharing or adding value is stuff that, um, I like to throw out on days where I'm not, you know, feeling up to par to write something super deep or emotional or thoughtful or, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, but definitely that's why, you know, we say a lot, like what, what, what program are you committed to right now? Like, are you sharing your journey of it? Are you sharing your struggles? Are you sharing your successes? Are you sharing your ongoing transformation? Because if you're not, you have nothing for people, nothing tangible for them to relate to or nothing for them um, to grasp onto. Like I remember Christina Delgado saying once that your body is your business and not that you have to be in perfect shape or anything like that. But a huge part of what we do is fitness and nutrition and, and personal progress, whether it's mental or physical transformation. And it's important to continue to pro progress in your own journey, like you were saying. Um, and then my last question for you, and then I'll open it up if anybody on the team has questions, but um, 
what are your top three tips to hitting success club every month? So basically from that month where it kind of clicked for you um, and you hit success club 16 and thought like, okay, I did this once, I can do it again, I can do it again. Like how are you consistently hitting success club and not only that, but high success club numbers every single month? What do you think the top three things that you are doing are? Um, I think for me, um, well, basically, like you always say, it, it should be non-negotiable. And so I have that drilled in my brain that it, it has to happen, whether it's Success Club 5 or Success Club 10. Um, there's no way that I, I can't help three people. So I have that drilled in my brain. Um, thank you. <laughs> but uh, most importantly, um, I think sharing, obviously, is, is, is huge. And I think also what we tend to forget or what I was forgetting at one point and it really clicked in me that when you're, you don't just have to share on social media, like you share in your day to day life with people you interact with. Like you, you know, you go to, you go to the grocery store, you have a conversation with someone, someone asks you what, you know, what you just did. Oh, I just worked out or I just did this or how do you work? You know, it just leads to conversations. So a lot of, um, a lot of people that, I, I've you know been thankful to help are people that I've I've even just had casual conversations on the street with like you can't be afraid to share what you do and um, you know social media is big and scary for me talking in person is not so hard for me um, so I, I feel like that for me is is a go-to if I'm having a conversation with someone I'm just I'm I've learned to become very open and it did take me some time to be like, I'm a beach body coach. I'm an independent beach body coach and this is what I do. Um, and, and people become intrigued and they, they are interested and they want to know what it is um, and how it works. And you know, it's so that that's been like a huge thing for me personally um, and something that I, I feel like has worked in terms of, you know, not just social media. It's like really, you know, making contact with other people, whether you know them or you don't, and you have a conversation. And I pretty much live in workout clothes, so people are always asking me like, what I just did. Um, so it's kind of an easy gateway. Um, and then I honestly, another thing is you have to, I feel like, really believe, which is something that I grew into as well, like really believing in in what it is that I'm doing. And like I said, people can feel that through your posts. So like I really genuinely believe that. And I've had numerous messages from people who haven't necessarily signed up with me, but they've messaged me to say, I have so many beach body coaches in my newsfeed, but you stand out. Like you make me think, question it, you know? And so like we've, you know, gone back and forth and had conversations and I always keep them and check in with them from time to time. And, you know, one has been ready, one hasn't or whatever. So I think the more you, you express, you know, your positivity and like what it's done for you on a deeper, deeper level than the, you know, whatever I lost five pounds, um, is, is important. Like you really have to search through like within your why and, and, and I'm working on that still myself. Like it's not something I'm, I've nailed down. Um, you know, I have a, a story that is big and great and I don't always go into it, but I'm working on it. So um, that's one, um, and you have to be consistent. Like you really do, like Dana, you said, um, whether it is you, you you feel it that day or you don't, you, you need to check in and, um, you know, really continue to let people know that you're there and that um, you are always there. Uh, another huge thing for me is that what we always talk about, like building your network, you have to remember your challengers are your network. Like the people that you've signed up, the people that you've had, they are huge because they're the ones experiencing it with you and they're the ones going through it. And that has been a very big thing for me. Like I've had, um, you know, several people from challengers that I don't know whether it's like a sister, a cousin, um, an aunt, you know, that have then reached out to me based on, you know, my initial challengers experience. So, I think it's important as I know Dana always expresses to us and really nails in that our job is not done once someone signs up for a challenge pack. It's like when it begins and 
you are there for them. I try, I have, you know, my whiteboard and all my current challengers on it and I check off once um, a week, like when I've checked in with them and go from there because it's really important for them to know that you're in it with them and that they're having a positive experience and that they are, you know, um, enjoying it or if they're not, like how that you can make it better for them or what they're struggling with because they're the ones that are going to open up your network as well and they're the people that are going to go tell X, Y, and Z, yeah, oh, you look great. Like, okay, well, this is what I'm doing. This is who I'm working with or this is, you know, so-and-so and that's another way to just expand your market because I can tell you that 70% of the people that I've helped haven't always been just from my personal page. Like they've been from people of people of people that, you know, have just shared and, you know, and on a, honestly, Dana, kudos to you because a lot of them have been in your challenge groups and they've had great experiences as well. So it's, um, it's just a great, a great thing to make sure that you're checking in with your challengers and really making sure that they're happy and that they're getting what they need. Um, and, you know, if they do go inactive, eventually, that you ch then check back in with them because sometimes, you know, a couple months down the line, they, you know, they're, they're ready to do it. And, you know, I've, I've been able to help people again that way. Um, so those, those are pretty much my big ones, like, you know, really just kind of being present and, you know, taking care of those you've helped and, um, you know, really telling yourself that you have to, you have to hit success club. I mean, it, it is what it is. Like, there's no way you can't not help three people. <laughs> I don't I know if that, that was helpful. One, that last one nails it. It's just non-negotiable, and that's it. It's just non-negotiable. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I love it, Jordan. You are awesome. Does anybody have questions that they would like to ask Jordan about anything that she talked about or anything you'd further like her to explain? No? All right. Well, thank you, Jordan, so much thank for you. Being with us. You are absolutely amazing, and I loved hearing all your tips. Hope everybody got something helpful out of it. Thank you guys for hopping Katie, on. you did tonight. awesome. <laughs> Thank you for inviting me to do this. I enjoyed it. Got to step out of your comfort zone. So cheer her on for doing that. Cause she oh, I did. I did, people. Thank you for your support. Yay, Brooklyn. She only, like, took four shots beforehand. <laughs> she was on I wish. <laughs> We don't have fireball. <laughs> <laughs>